Hey folks, it's Rika here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator here in Boulder Canyon. I am just going to set this one going and make sure that everything is all tickety-boo and wonderful with it. And it's going to carry on around the field doing its thing. And what I'm also going to do is go and start this one up. And I'm going to run down alongside the combine there and we're going to unload the soybeans that are in it. As soon as I've done that, I will head over to our mower tractor and we can get that one going again. And then once the mower is going again, we're not going to be far off of being ready to go and start doing the turning up in that field, actually. It's going to be interesting to see how well the turning works up there. I don't remember. Did, we didn't actually do any turning up there, did we? We haven't done turning up there. Because we did the round bales down here. We bought the square baler before we got that field ready up there. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can do anything with the hay turner up there. On You know on the, the, the odd patches, the weird patches that we got up there? Now, are we going to reach a full 8,000 exactly? Uh, I'm 50 litres short. <laughs> exactly 50 litres short. I'm going to actually get the 50 litres. I'd like to get a full 50 litres here. If we can. Let's do that first. That's our first accomplishment is one full trailer load of grain. There we go. One full trailer load of grain. I will just take this one straight over here. Scramble up onto there like that. And let it tip. Right. You tip out there and we will go and just have a look at this. Well, he's not going to have any problem getting around there because we've got, um, yeah, we, we've already done a couple times around the field. So we don't need to worry about that one. Let's get up here to this one. We can start this bad boy up. And there is the huge great big bits. <laughs> Left it. Look at that. It's absolutely ridiculous. It really is utterly ridiculous the way that it leaves it behind like that. Um, there's nothing that we can do about it. And I'm sort of hoping that once we change over and we have a different field going up here, then we might be able to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to go over this way. I've left that bit over there. Never mind. I, I, I won't worry about that. I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to grab that little strip down through there. And lift that one up. And then I'm going to start the hired help going from here. We go up this side. It's, it's easier to start. The, you can line it up a lot easier if you start it from this side. So we'll go to about there, and I will press H, and away he goes. So that one is going, and he didn't break fast enough to be able to lower the mower down, so we'll have to um, tidy that up afterwards. It's not that it's going to be any great hardship or anything. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's this. you've got this little circle here, haven't you? Right, we've got this little circle here, and it's a very clear line on this circle, and then it drops it right there on the other part of it. And it'll go back up, and it'll do the same. So there's one little bit right there. There's another little bit down there, but that's not really a great hardship, that bit. That's not really much of an issue down there. Um, it's, it's that bit up there that's more of a problem for us. So I'm hoping that that will eventually... Oh, well... Mostly, I'd like to get rid of it myself, but I, I, I'll i be honest, I do keep forgetting about it. I, I do have every intention of going and, and trying to have a look and see if I can do anything about it, but I do keep forgetting about it. I, I, I will, at some point, try and remember to take a look, but um, yeah, at the moment, nothing doings. We, we, we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll get there at some point. Now, it shouldn't have all that much to leave behind now there. Much smaller quantity that it's left behind. It's still interrupted the mowing a bit but not by any great degree not like it was doing it before and, that they eat. and also well the next run you should be fine there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever now something that i have gone and got something that i have um actually i don't want to do that uh i want to i don't want to do that let's go to here something that i have gone and picked up is a new sheep pen a new type of sheep pen. Now, I wasn't actually thinking to use it in this series. I was going to keep it for using in a different series. Um, I'll almost definitely use it in the Alps series. Um, and you can comment on here as whether you think I should be using it in the Alps Panorama series. 
So we've got our sheep pen right here. I've got some new animal pens in here, and these are from Stevie. So he's made everything bigger. Now, they're pretty much the same. There's not a great deal of difference between them, except that well, it, it's cheaper. There's 15000 there. The large chicken coop there that takes 400 that's $40,000, that one is. Whereas this large chicken coop here is only 15000 You've got a cow one there, which is 250 That takes 450 cows. The pig one takes 450 and the sheep pen over there also takes 450 sheep. When you look at the prices of the base game ones, 300,000, the large pig enclosure is 250, and the large sheep is 180,000. So his ones are cheaper, and they've got a higher capacity. So I, you know, I, it, they're not massively cheaper, but they are still cheaper. So I'm wondering about maybe tweaking the prices on those before I actually use them. Um, but the, the reason I'm looking at them is. The size of the stuff in front, like if you look there, you've got a much bigger area for wool on sheep, which is absolutely great. That's not going to affect our Alps Panorama series. Uh, this one it could do, and we got we can have 450 sheep in one pen rather than just a 250, um, which I, I do like that bit, but I'm sort of thinking we probably won't put them into here. Then on here with the pigs, um, mostly the advantage with the pigs on here is that you've got... 450 capacity rather than the, the other capacity. Horses are the same. So a 16 horse pen. Um, cows, 450 cows rather than... What's the large cow pen? Uh, 200. So you get extra... You, you more than double your number of cows that you can put into that one. And chickens over here. I can fit 500 chickens in here instead of 400 in the base game one. So the chickens... I mean, the, the big thing with the chickens is, again, you've got a bigger area for the eggs coming off of it. And that's the bit that I, that I particularly like about this one. Um, there doesn't seem to be a spot for water with the chicken pen. Right? You've got the chicken pen over here you've got water right there uh no water is that one and food is that one there that's what you've got with the chicken pen with this one oh no it does have it look you can see there's, there's, there's the two over on the sides there so the, the chicken pen it does have it and it's about the same size as the one that exists. So there's not a lot of difference to it. This is the ones that he's made for his Fenton Forest map. And I do quite like them. I, I think they're quite nice ones. Um, so come out of there. I can't go and hold the, I, the horse one I can. But I don't quite have 110,000 to show you the sheep pen on there. Uh, but yeah, so those there are options. And I wasn't actually thinking of using them on this series. But I was thinking of using them on the... Where are we? There's our combine. Uh, I was seriously considering using it on the Alps Panorama series. Especially, well, the cattle pen in particular. Because I thought it would be good to be able to move our cattle around. Having the extra capacity working in with the seasons, I thought it would be a really nice little touch. So, if you watch the Alps Panorama series as well as this one, uh, give me your thoughts and opinions. Because I'm getting a little ways ahead on that series so i'm not going to be able to see your comments regarding whether or not you think i should use the pens before i'm ready to actually start placing them down due to christmas coming up and stuff like that so this is about the only way that i can get some responses regarding that particular one um on here i was thinking probably not but i am actually open to the idea of using it over there um, instead of the sheep pen that we've got purely because of the larger capacity wool pallets collection area. I think that could act, yeah, that could be quite a good thing to do if, if we've got, you know, with that larger capacity wool pallets um, spot, that might actually be a good thing to do. We can run the, you know, we get some more wool pallets in there i got eight wool pallets sat there at the moment. I can go and get more than that. And with 450 capacity, it means that we wouldn't have to worry about another sheep pen for a while. However, in order to compensate for that, I do think that I would have to alter the price just a little bit and um, tweak the price up. Because a large sheep pasture on here for 250 sheep is $180,000. Whereas this one is 110 for nearly double that. Um... You know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking that 
that's cutting corners as far as the price is concerned. So in order to accurately reflect what we've got, actually, I'm going to do a quick calculation. I've got my calculator here. So 180,000 divided by the 250 sheep that we can have is $720 per sheep. So for housing, 720. So 720 times the 450 on there means that if we go with the base game prices, I need to alter the sheep pen here to $324,000. If I was to make that one cost $324,000, then I would be paying the same amount per sheep for um, living space as we are with the base game. So maybe for this series, that would be something that would be a little bit more suitable because for this series... I feel that it, you know things are a little bit different for this series, aren't they? You know, we've got um, we're, it, it's supposed to be a lot more realistic, and yeah, you probably wouldn't pay quite that much. So, say we could knock that down to three hundred or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, because the bigger the pen, the cheaper it is going to be per sheep, and it's just a you know that's just a thing as standard. Um, but yeah, there's, there's that definite possibility. What I didn't realise down the bottom of this field is okay he's left quite a bit there on that run um there's a line with no tip collision all the way across the bottom of the field down there i didn't actually realize that that was even going to be a thing and are you going to go right the way th you are going to go right the way through you're going to do some weird crazy stuff with the mower like that Right, you do your weird crazy stuff and then head on down the hill. But if you look, we've got the tip collision issue in a line right the way across the bottom of the field. And I'm wondering if that is going to exist all the way down across that field, which is going to be a bit of a jolly nuisance for any mowers that go all the way along there. Look at that. That is really going to be a bit of a jolly nuisance, isn't it? Right, that is going to be a problem for us. So I am... Right, I don't want you messing around. He's, he's going to try and reverse all the way up the hill instead of taking care of this bit down here. Which I don't want it to do. So I'm going to bring this one down here like this and straighten up a bit like that. And then I will go here. Let him carry on up the field. So we take care of this bit. And then I've just got a few little bits left that I need to tidy up afterwards. I don't remember it doing that, but then we wouldn't really have noticed it doing that because it's only a very short bit with the mower and the, the baler on the back. Now, I do remember it doing something with the mower and the baler on the back, but not to that kind of extent. Definitely not to that sort of level. So there's definite, there, there is some weirdness going on here. Right, I don't know why you're trying to reverse or do anything at all, because you, you're finished. So let me I'll switch over to the front mower. And I'll just do that little bit there with the front mower. And then we will activate the rear mower as well. And we'll go up here and just finish off this little strip. And then I've got a few bits up and down the field that we just want to take out. I'm not going to do a great deal of taking out the rest of it. I'm just going to sort of do one quick whip round the field and remove... Actually, I don't even need to have the back mower going. We can lift that one up and we can just have the front mower going like this. Run along this top edge here. And that's most of the grass then taken care of. We can go and get the hay turner and get that one started. We've got a choice of using our little tiny tractor and putting it on that one, or we can stick with the, this tractor and just, just run it on this one. Um, I'm actually thinking that we'll probably put the hay turner on this tractor this time. Right here, we've got this coming out in a triangle. It's like there's a yard here somewhere. Hang on, let's, let's go to the map a minute. Zoom out a bit. If this was originally taken off of the um, the Ravenport map, that would be sort of roughly where the dealership was, wouldn't it? Or was the dealership... No, the dealership there was a bit further south. Um, what was the square in the middle? Because this is what I've been told, is that a lot of people take one of the base game maps... 
and then remove everything and then build it up from there. So the tip collision layer is likely still in existence from the base game map. That's why we've got these squares right here. Or I've got this square right here, not squares. And we've also got that line across there. This square here would be a, um, a structure of some kind placed down, uh, say, a sawmill, something along those lines. And the other bit, this along here, will be one of the roads traveling across the map. And that is why we have these um, strange tip collision features going on. Uh, so all I need to do is figure out how to remove the tip collision. And that is something that I... Oops. Uh, right. Don't do that. There we go. I'll turn them both off and I will fold them both up. Fold that one up as well. Um, yeah, the, the tip collision is something that I fully intend to try to solve. I would like to try and figure out just why it keeps doing it. It is definitely on my to-do list for things to try and solve. If I can, that would be absolutely brilliant because there's bound to be some other areas on this map as well that don't have the tip collision. It's uh, that have got the tip collision in, in the way, um, which is going to cause us more issues. So if I can figure out all by myself how to do this, that would be great. And I, I do keep meaning to do it. Every time I come on here and record, I keep meaning to actually go and do this. And then I don't actually get round to doing it because uh, I've sort of forgotten all about it. So I'm going to write it down in a minute. I'm going to write it down on a little post-it note so that I don't forget. And then I'm going to go and find a video on how to remove tip collision layers. Because there is nothing on this map. There is nowhere that I actually want a tip collision um, layer like, I, I don't want it. I, I don't want it on here at all. I want to completely remove anything resembling tip collision all the way across everything. And if I can do that... Right, you go on a little bit further there. If I can do that, then we'll be able to tip stuff out wherever we want. Because, like, I'm not going to go and try and tip stuff inside the sawmill up there. So that's not going to be an issue. Um, it, it's not going to stop me from doing anything. So if I can just remove the entire layer, and that's what some people have said in the comments section is that the tip collision, it's a layer that is on the map, and you can either alter it and adjust it, or you can simply remove it. So I will have a look, watch a video or two, and see if I can figure out how to actually remove it completely. Because if I can do that, um, I see no reason why... I shouldn't. I, there, there doesn't seem to be anything else on the map that is going to need that layer at all, is there? I don't think there is. As far as I can see, we've, we've got no reason to need it. Because, like, the animal pens, even if we did want them in the animal pens, um, like, they do their own layer, don't they? They, they? they add their own tip collision layer in, and so I don't need an extra bit that is across the map. I'll have, to, I'll have to see. That that will be my homework this weekend, if I remember. If I remember. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping I remember, because I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I keep thinking about it, and I have talked to a couple people about it, and I've just got to actually <laughs> remember to go and do it. That's, that's the, the, the more difficult bit. But I'm not going to change the combine to moving in strips up and down the field. Not yet, anyway. I'm going to leave it doing exactly what it's doing at the moment. These mowers, we've only done a little bit, so I'm going to go and put them back in the shed just as they are right now. So I will put that one in. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to bother doing a, a service or a clean or anything because they've we've hardly used them and they are pretty, almost nearly completely spotless. So I'll bring you back there like that, and unfortunately I'm going to do that. I can't lower it down, otherwise it will fold up and destroy all the rest of the machinery in the shed. Which is probably not going to be very helpful to us. Now, if I can straighten you out a little bit. There we go. I'll do that like that. And I'll bring you in a little bit like that. And lower that one down. There. Right, there's that bit done. I then want to go and do the turning. And I'm going to use this tractor to do the turning. I know that it is extremely overpowered for doing it. And... That little electric tractor would probably be the best one for doing... You know what? 
I've just talked myself out of it. We're going to park this tractor here. Actually, you know what? We're going to act, we're, we're going to take this tractor around and we're going to put it in front of the fuel supply. And I'm going to start putting some fuel in it. We're bouncing up across there. Bouncing down across there. We're going to put a little bit of fuel in it. I'm going to stop you there. And I'm going to start filling that one up. Right. If I just leave that there, it's still running and it's still got the money going. That's good. So we can leave that one filling up with fuel because he's nearly empty. This one over here is just fine. It's our electric tractor. I'll bring you over there. $339 in fuel. And bring that back round this way. Oops. There we go. Let's try turning the correct way when we do this, shall we? Uh, bring you back a little bit. Hook you on there. Right, lower you down and keep you lowered down until I pull out of there, like that, and then lift you up, because otherwise it will catch... Oh, actually, no, I don't know if that one would catch on the roof. That one might be able to do the turn without needing to worry about it. Okay, now we can take our little electric tractor all the way up to the other end and get this started on making some hay. And then once that one is underway, the combine is going very nicely. We're on 40% in the combine. I will... Once this one has started, I will go and get that one over there and hook onto the combine. Okay, it's interesting that he sort of pulled it out on that shape. It's going to be more interesting to see what happens on its next time round. Is it still going to be able to cope with that? It'd probably be better if at this point I was to change it over to doing um, uh, just straight runs up and down the field. But I'm not going to. Right, I'm going to bring you over to here. And I'm going to unfold you. I suspect that this one is really going to struggle going up the hill with this. Because it's a very steep hill. It is a very steep hill. And it's not a very powerful tractor at all. Two miles an hour. <laughs> okay, perhaps we should have been using the bigger tractor. Perhaps, just maybe... The bigger tractor was the one that we needed for doing this. Because, uh, quite frankly... <laughs> that doesn't seem like it's going to be able to do anything at all. And it, it's sort of doing it all right with those. And again, the tip collision. It doesn't even work with the hay turner. Tip collision doesn't work with the hay turner either. Okay, this tip collision is quite frustrating when it comes to doing this. It must be said. We've not actually done this before on these fields. So I wasn't aware that it was anything like this bad. Uh... I'm going to stop that one. I'm going to stop it like that. And I'm going to unhitch that one. And it's going to run all the way down the field. I didn't think it would do that. Right. <laughs> okay. That one's dashed off down across the field. I need to get this tractor down from up here. Which... <laughs> Might be easier said than done. I probably sh I probably shouldn't have turned right just then. I probably would have been better off if I had just driven straight down off of the field to start with. Right. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. Right. Let's go and put this one back. And this tractor, we don't really have much use for this tractor anymore. Um... I mean, there, there are the odds. There is, there, there is the occasional rare time when we use this tractor. But let's be honest. Almost every farm I've ever worked on that has got a small old tractor like this has never sold the small old tractor. Even if they never use it, they never get rid of it. Right? Getting rid of the tractor is not something that ever happens. That one, the, the tractor stays with them. Forever until the end of time the tractor stays with them now. I've got my harvester working in the field over there I need to go. Where is he? Where is the harvester? Oh, he's he's over there, right? We'll run round over here and we'll empty him out again We can do that on the big curve coming in through and then once I've done that I will get the case tractor Wherever I went and dumped that one Actually, where did I put that case tractor? I thought I left... 
Oh, no. I was going to say, I thought I left it right there in the middle of the yard. And now I'm panicking because I can't see it. I didn't. I went and filled it up. <laughs> went and filled it up with fuel. I left it by the... I left it by the fuel. Okay. Panic over. I haven't suddenly... Like, we haven't got some major weird bug that has just occurred. And gotten rid of the tractor completely and elim <laughs> eliminated it from the game. That would really not be good at all that that would really really be a bad thing to happen so no uh, that, that, that hasn't happened it's absolutely fine we've got nothing to worry about now i just need to unload this one then i can go and get that tractor we can go and put the hay turner on and we can start turning our hay as soon as we've got the, t the hay turned we'll get the rake going out in that field and we'll see if we can get everything all bailed up. Despite the tip collision sort of causing all of these little issues that it's causing at the moment, I'm going to just move this tractor out of the way a minute. I'm going to put it over to there, and I'm going to stop right there like that, and then jump to the combine. I want to watch the combine do the turning on here. How's it going to do it? Because it's done some... It looks like it's doing some weird things now. Is it going to turn right round on itself? It is turning right round on itself. It doesn't like the fact that it's having to come out like that and stop. So I think now is the time to change over. Like if, if I bring it down onto there and go from this point, it will keep going. But I think we have reached a point where I need to change over. Although... Let's see why we need to. Once, yeah, it's, it's, it'll come out there. It should be all right to keep going around the field on that bit. I wanted it to keep. No, I wanted to keep going around in circles. I, I've not done that before. We've, we've not actually done it where it's just kept going around in circles continuously for the entire time. Now I don't need a front weight while I'm going and doing the um, the turning. That's that's definitely not something that we're going to want. So I will just leave this tractor exactly as it is. And we will go whizzing off to the field. Now, you could argue that maybe I should use the Deutz instead of this one. But, quite frankly, both of them are overkill. And uh, this is a more comfortable tractor to drive. So, I see no shame in using this tractor. The other tractor that we tried doesn't have the oomph to get up the hill. So, we need one of the big tractors. One's got to be on the... Um Oop, no, I need to be over that side. One of them has got to be on the grain trailer, and one of them has got to be working this field over here. Considering that we'll want this one for pulling the baler after we've done this, uh, we may as well stick with this tractor for doing all of the haymaking. So we will bring you up to here and drop you down, and we're away. Now we can actually do some turning, and it's working properly. That's much better. That's much more like it. We are going to have a little bit of grass possibly kicking out to the side right here. I don't want to kick very much out to the side if I can help it. Because it's difficult to go and get it back with the rake afterwards. That's that's where the difficulty lies, is, is gathering everything up with the rake once you're done with this bit. Right, I'm... It's up in. It's supposed to be up in the air. It's supposed to be picking it up. It's not supposed to be lo uh, like causing a mess under that bit. That means it's likely to do that when we go round the field, uh, uh, doing the the headlands with the field. Uh, not the headlands. Um, do, doing the land work with the the hired help. The hired help is likely to cause us some problems, making a bit of a mess and kicking the stuff out sideways. I mean, I hope it doesn't, but it does look like it might actually do that because it spreads it out so far with this hay turn look at it look how far it's going with that hay turner which means that we could end up having a bit of a problem there i mean if we've got some that's left over and it's causing a mess then what we'll do is we'll go and we'll use the landscaping thing um and we'll just tidy it up with that because we can with the global mod company which is base game mod by the way uh, a few people asking me about that. The, the global mod company that we use, this one in here, global company right there, it's base game mod. Some of these items are not on Mod Hub at the moment, but the global company, you just go and Google search the glo global company. I don't know where they've all come from. I, I don't know the links. For the ones that are not available on Mod Hub, I don't know where they've come from because I've not actually gone and got them myself. 
If you'd like those mods, join our Discord server. And you will be able to download the complete mod set from our Discord server. And, uh, well, not from the Discord server, but from... Because we've got... What's going on there? We've got on our Discord server um, a multiplayer map. We, there is a multiplayer map on there that uh, everybody is welcome to come along and use. And the mods that are on there, some of which, some of them are um, the, the, the mods that I use in here. That, um, and they're available for everybody to use. So you, you can go along there. You can join up with that bit. You can get the link for all of the downloads. You can go and download them all. And then you will also have all of the mods available that you see me using. Not all of the ones on this series. But when we do the multiplayer series... Uh, you know, the, the live streams, I do the multiplayer live streams uh, when I do those the mods that we use on there those are the ones that we use on the multiplayer server uh, so you be able, you'll be able to download the whole lot all together and so yeah join the discord, there is a link in the description down below, join the discord and then you, you too will also be able to have those mods and that should include the global company um, mods that I don't actually uh, not that I was going to say that I don't actually have. It's not ones that I don't actually have. It's the, the global company mods that um, aren't available on the mod hub. Because there, there are a couple of them. And I'm not quite sure where they've been uploaded. But the, there are a couple of them kicking around that aren't yet on the mod hub. Uh, for, for whatever reason. Now, let's just bring this back around here. I'm going to do one pass here. And, it's, and we're going to go right up across the field. i tell you what I will do, actually is I'm going to keep this bit separate because I think that the hired help is going to get a little bit weird about this down here. So if I just do a line across here like this, we go whizzing along here, then we shouldn't have any weirdness happening. That's what I'm hoping, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking, is that there shouldn't be any weirdness happening. If I bring that into there like that, I'll back him up a bit. Lower him down. I will do this piece down the bottom, like that. And then the hired help will do the turning around part way up the field up there. That's going to be a lot better. It's going to make my life a lot easier as well. And then when it comes to... Well, coming to do, when we come to do the raking, I'm, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do with that. Because this is... Again, it's, it's a very weird state of affairs looking at this thing. Look at it. It's, it's absolutely enormous. There's a big old mess right here. So I'll come in here like this, and I'm going to go up alongside it. I was thinking I'd need to go up alongside it, but no, I don't actually need to go alongside it. And I'll just bring that in there. Because I was worried that the, the turner wouldn't get it all if I went right over the top of it all. But it is doing it. And then I will come over here, and I will grab that little bit there. Like that. And then I will come back over to here. And I will drive up through there. And then that will be that bit done. We won't have to worry about it anymore. So it would seem that grass is the only time that we have issues with this whole mod collision thing. Uh, not the, with the mod collision, with the, the tip collision thing. The grass is the only issue that we're having with it. The rest of the time, everything seems to be working just fine on this map. Uh, everything else that we've had, we, we haven't really had any issues. There's a, a couple of little bits with, um, like, double trees and, and trees that are kind of half trees and exist and don't exist at the same time, which is a little bit odd. Uh, I've never actually seen that before. Um, but for the most part, this map is pretty good. It's, it's, it's got most of what we need in here, and there doesn't seem to be very much in the way of issues. And because it's a forestry map... I got the Im I, I do get the impression that the map wasn't designed for uh, with with farming in mind. You know, you are able to go and do that. That is an option that you've got available. But the person who made the map, I got the impression that the setting it up ready for doing the farming was not a priority or uh, even something that needed to be a consideration. Um, and that would be why you've got things like the the tip collision still left on there because as a, for a forestry map. That wouldn't matter. That wouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Now, my big question is, is it going to chuck 
hay out when it's doing this bit. It's going to come up there. Like that. Uh, not too bad. Right, that, that doesn't seem too bad. And then he's going to come down here. He's going to lower in. I know that the grain is waiting to tip out. And I know that we've also just about run out of time for today's episode. So we'll have to continue this on next time. Uh, that one can go all the way up to there. Right, is he going to turn round or is he going to try and go on further? No, he's going to turn round. Right. We'll let that one carry on. He's going to do what he's going to do. We need to go over to here. Get you. And where is the combine? Oh, he's over there. Right. We'll go over and we'll unload that one. Actually, I'm going to start heading over that way, but I have run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.